Hey guys, happy new year and welcome to 2021. You have escaped the nightmare of 2020. You did it. Congratulations. And now that we are here on day one of 2021, we need to start talking about resolutions and goals and what is this year going to look like for you. Let's go. Hey guys, my name is Seth Yolorda, and I love helping organizations and individuals get clear on where they're going and how they're going to get there. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you can do me a favor, go ahead and smash that like button and share this message with someone else. Now, I want to talk to you just real quick about resolutions. I have been making resolutions for most of my mature adult life since I was 17, 18 and started really thinking about the future and the year and what I want to accomplish. So I have always been for the last 20, 25 years, I have been a big resolutions guy. However, as I was just this last um, couple weeks, just thinking about what my resolutions and goals for this new year are going to actually look like, I started to think about, you know what, maybe resolutions resolutions and maybe goals really shouldn't be the direction that we go. It really shouldn't be how we frame what we're trying to accomplish in this new year. Maybe, just just maybe, the way that we should frame what we're trying to accomplish is not in resolutions or goals or in what we're trying to acquire, right, acquisitions, but maybe it should be about formations. Who are you trying to be? I was just really wrestling with this, and I thought, you know what? Rather than me saying, hey, this year I want to lose 15 pounds, or I want to make X amount of money, or I want to go on so many dates with my wife, how about I frame it like, you know what, this year I want to be a better husband. This year I want to be someone who works out regularly. This year I want to be a better brother or a brother, better father. This year I want to be a better listener, right? This year I want to really be intentional about who I want to be formed into, right? I think that there is some value in this because when you think about goals and listen, don't get me wrong. Like if you're a goal setter, go forward, carry on. There's nothing wrong with goals. But I just think that for me, what I've experienced is that goals so often they have a finish line. And so once you lose that weight or once you hit that, that target financial number, or once you've gone on X amount of dates or whatever your goal was, then what? Like, like, do you set a new goal and say, okay, now I lost 15 pounds, now I want to lose 15 more pounds, or now I made X amount of dollars, now I want to make this much more money? Like, like, once you cross that finish line, what I've experienced is that a lot of times, like, the energy and the momentum to continue the behavior that I've had to really implement in my life to reach that goal, I just don't have the momentum or the, 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 the energy or the inspiration to continue that behavior. In fact, it really happened to me this year. This year, I, around September, I jumped into a 30-day keto nutrition challenge, right? It was a weight loss challenge. I paid $100 for it. Yes, I paid $100 for it to jump into this challenge. And the goal was Depending on how much you were able to lose, how much muscle you're able to gain, you could win up to $1,000. In fact, I think they selected three individuals that would be rewarded $1,000 based off of their before and after pick. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. So I paid $100, and my goal was to, I was around 225, I think, maybe close to 230. My goal was to get down to 205, right, in 30 days. So I started embracing keto, you know, cut out carbs. If you know anything about keto, it's low carb. So I cut out a lot of these carbs, breads, rice, pastas, desserts, things along those natures. I was really watching my macros. I had the app um, and I was watching my macros uh, and I just really took, you know, seriously my attempt to, to lose this weight. And I lost in the 30 days, I lost about about 15 pounds. And, you know, it made a difference. Like it really, I really felt like, you know, my pants fit better. When I stepped out the shower, I could see like the little, little beginnings of a six pack. Like it was really something that I was excited to do. But once the, once the challenge was over and I realized, okay, I didn't win the challenge. And I went from like 225 down to like 202. Seven, right? 210, 27. I was about five pounds away from my target weight. 
for some reason, I just lost the motivation. Like, I was just like, you know what? Ah, them donuts is looking real good right now. Like, ah, those cookies are looking real good. And I just lost the motivation. I lost the motivation to eat right. I lost the motivation to work out regularly. I lost the motivation to, like, really count my carbs and making sure that I'm following this strict regimen because the challenge was over. Right. And so as I was just kind of thinking about that, in fact, I actually gained back about 10 or 12 of those 15 pounds that I lost. And as I was just thinking about this thing, I said, you know what? I mean, challenges are good and goals are good. But I think what I really need to lean into into this new year is not so much a goal or something I want to achieve, but it's more who I want to be formed into. Like what behaviors do I want to implement into my life and make them a part of the rhythm of my life? This is something that we see so often in the car manufacturer, the car industry, where every year they will release a new automobile. Every year they will release a new version of a car. So the 2019 you know, Honda Accord, they released in 2020, and they release it before 2020 even comes. And the 2021, they release in the middle of 2020. And a lot of times, especially with the higher end cars, they're not making a lot of changes, right? They might just tweak a few things here or there. They might change the headlights. They might change you know, um, just the interior slightly. But there's not a major difference between last year's model and this year's model. And yet what the car industry, I think, understands is that it's not about setting these like astronomical goals that you're trying to reach of losing 100 pounds. It's about incremental changes. And then if you can make incremental behavioral changes over time, you will begin to see massive rewards and major wins in your life. And so when I think about this new year, what I'm doing is I'm saying, you know what, who do I want to be formed into? I want to be more patient. I want to be a better listener. I want to be someone who does work out regularly. Now, once you've identified these formations, then you might say, okay, in order for me to be a better listener, here are some things I'm going to have to do. Here are some action items or some behaviors I'm going to have to start doing. So when my wife comes in and she talks to me, I need to make sure I put away my phone. And so there is some, it's not really a goal, but there are some action items that are going to have to be implemented in your life in order for you to be formed into this person. But really at its core, it's not about crossing the finish line of you having reached this goal. It's really about who you are being formed into. Now, obviously, if you are, you know, trying to pay off some debt and you are trying to, you know, um, win the financial game, you you probably want to set some goals. And again, there's nothing wrong with goal setting, but I've just realized in my life and in my journey that goal setting, while it does does kind of get me started a lot of times, and I think the research shows this, a lot of times, specifically with resolutions, we find ourselves struggling to actually carry out that goal in the long run. And so I want to encourage you, I want to challenge you to think about who do you want to be formed into this new year? What type of husband or wife or brother or sister or coworker or employee or employer, what type of individual do you want to be? What type of of, of a financial person do you want to be? Do you want to be someone who says, you know what, it's not so much about a financial goal, but I just want to build the rhythm of saving into my life. So I am. I want to be considered a saver. So what do savers do? They, they save. Or I want to be an investor. And so you start investing more and more into your finances. I want to challenge you to take time this first week of January and to start really writing down what type of person do you want to be formed in Now, one way that you could do this is you could ask those around you for some feedback, right? Feedback is a beautiful, wonderful thing. You could actually ask your spouse, your family, your friends, your roommates, those people who are closest to you, your parents, hey, you know... I'm thinking about, you know, just growing and developing as an individual. What are some areas in my life that you think I could grow in? Woo! Now that, like, if you you have the ability, the maturity to ask that question, you're going places. Let, Let me just tell you. Ask them that hard question. What are some areas that you think I could grow into? And then don't try to like defend whatever, if they tell you something, don't try to defend yourself or try to justify why you do what you do. Just respond by saying, 
Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. You might agree. You might not agree, right? Let it roll off your back and carry on. But I want to challenge you as you go into this new year, let's think about formations. Who do you want to be formed into? And let that 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 idea be the North Star that pulls you into the future. All right? Check it out. Let me know what you do. I would love for you to drop a comment and let me know what you've come up with and who you want to be formed into. Thanks so much. Peace.